What is up, football fans? Riley, Kenny, Gless, Pastel. We are here at Woodridge Farm Brewery outside of Charlottesville, Virginia, right behind us, that cool ass building out there. So cool. They are kind enough to host us for our Fans Above All holiday special. Holiday special. Now, if you follow our show, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you follow us on our various social media accounts, this show is a little bit different than what you're going to be used to. So we thought, you know, for our holiday special, as our show continues to grow, mm -hmm. we start to build a fan base. We want to get the fans more involved, right, yes, guys? Absolutely. Correct. Um, absolutely. So what we're going to do is we gathered some questions on social media. We printed them out on cards, and we're going to basically do a roundtable and kind of just, you know, yeah, talk it. about some football. Um, so also important to note, Riley, yeah. we also have beer and lots of it, <laughs> and we have cigars. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. Well, it's our holiday special, That's Gless. Right. you got to do it right, man. The beer is delicious. I am a way. little surprised <laughs> that Gless is drinking right now, considering that we had to pull over <laughs> on our way here. <laughs> Because I thought he was going to yak on the side of the road. I had a rough night last night. <laughs> Jay, what happens you go to a JMU Weber State semifinal game? Which JMU did win, by the yeah, way. Congratulations yeah. to JMU. It, it was that Maker's Ooh. Mark nightcap. That's Ooh. really what did it, me It's in. that point of the night when you know you've, you're have you done, right? You had enough beer, you're beard out. You try switching to like your seltzer water now, your your white claws, and that that's done too. And then you, why'd you get up the Maker's Mark, man? Like, why? <laughs> you were done. I wanted to pull my best Mad Men. I don't know. Oh, I, I don't forgot know. to tell you guys. So, like, um, what was it? What Friday. Friday, I was driving up to Fredericksburg, you know, uh, where we're all from. Mm -hmm. And I was going to come out to the mountains from here or from there. And I was talking to Pastel on the phone. So, it was me and Reese, my three-year-old. We were meeting my wife up in Fredericksburg. <laughs> so, like, two minutes after I got off the phone with you, Brandon. Yeah. Like, we're sitting there. Everything's fine. We hit traffic on I-95. There's a shocker, right? Yeah, right. So, we're sitting in traffic, and Reese is like, Daddy, I gotta go potty. And I'm like, oh, oh crap. No. Uh, I could see the exit. Like, it's off off yonder over there. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, Reese, just just hold on. Can you hold it? Hold, hold it tight. And she's like, oh, oh. And she starts like, it was like she was in pain. I was like, oh, man, she's really, she really has to go. She really holds so it. So I'm in. like, all right, I'm like, all right, sweetie, we're pulling over, pull over. We start to pull over off the side of the highway. Barfs all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen? Have you ever seen Team America? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the scene, the scene yeah. where he's in the alley, and it's yeah. just like endless. It was like me outside of CC's Pizza after my first. Oh, dip. dude, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh man, listening to Kanye West in the background. <laughs> yeah, you're all right, Riley. You're all right. <laughs> We're motivating you. We're like, come on, buddy. <laughs> It was get it, it was, all out. It was, it it was all like out. it was like 25 degrees outside, so I'm on the side of the highway. She did have to pee, so she took her first squat on the side oh, of the highway. That's I a big moment in somebody's club. life, by the way. I just <laughs> want to say, won't be the last one either. Won't be the last one either. No, I can't remember when my first was, but it wasn't at three years old. No. So I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so like, I have to get her changed and everything, and it's like 25 degrees, just awful. So thank you, Gless, for not yacking on our way here because I've seen enough of that crap. I actually didn't know that story until right now, but that actually makes it all. All come full circle. I know, right? Plus, I didn't tell you guys. Dude, you're known for it, man. I remember coming back from Winchester a couple times and you pulling over off the side of the road and just yeah. yakking over. I've gotten better as I've aged. Um, I don't yak <laughs> as much. But you're not so. better at hiding it. Like, we no, always know no. when it's going to come. Oh. Your chest sticks out a little bit. We were driving. Start rubbing the legs. <laughs> Dude, I was rubbing start, your legs. I was starting to sweat in the car. <laughs> That's and never it, good. It is we freezing <laughs> out. And I was starting to sweat. Was it you? Like, like, are you all right, you all right Gless? <laughs> can we pull down a window here? Can you turn on the AC? It's 38 degrees. Right now, the mountains <laughs> I'm in the front seat, like, no, I don't want to turn the AC, man. I'm freezing up here. <laughs> because friggin' Jeff Gordon over here is going around the mountain pass. <laughs> it's like... a mountain. What do you want me to do? <laughs> uh, hey. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we got off track there. Let's get back yep. to the holiday show. All right. All right. So, guys, you want to just go ahead and like kick this off? By the way, thank you all yeah. to the yes. fans who submitted yep. questions. We really got a ton of good that. ones. So, we're going to try to get to as many as possible. If we don't, get to your question odds are that it's more of an in-depth type of question like season predictions yeah. things like that yep. we're going to do segments on that once we get to training camp because right now we just don't know the rosters rosters well are yeah. so fluid like it's very hard like the defenders and i'm sure we'll talk about this later the defenders put out a in their um, mini camp recap, <laughs> that they went in with seventy and left with fifty, and we're like, yeah, and we don't know who the other twenty that got cut were. Yeah, we have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, I would assume it's a quarter, are. like a quarterback has to be in there, right? They're not I mean, carry I three out of fifty. Are you uh, insinuating Vlad Lee from taking you? I don't know. Hey. <laughs> I'm just saying that a quarterback. <laughs> I'm sure Vlad Lee. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's not Cardell or Tyree Jackson. So I think I'm just, yeah, I'm just saying. 
numbers wise, it doesn't make <laughs> yeah. sense. But, yeah, like you said, no, no, for the in depth stuff, it's that stuff we'll get into. We're going to do like one off segments, segments during yeah. training camp. Kenny, why don't you go ahead and get us started? What is our first question? Yeah, so our, our first questions is from uh, Max Levy on Twitter, and he has two questions for us. First one is which XFL city should hold the title game? His second Ooh. question is. What quarterbacks out of the ones available and potentially available would you guys want the XFL to sign, particularly Tampa Bay, to improve the starter competition? Ooh, so let's blow, blow. let's touch base on the first question. Which XFL city should hold the title So we game? talked about this yep. in a segment before when we went over the schedule. Yeah. And I think, so we're assuming that one of the XFL cities is hosting because that hasn't even come out yet. It could be a neutral right. city. Right? I've seen some reports out there, but there hasn't been anything, I believe, announced officially. Yeah. So we really don't know, but I guess so we'll so just go off of his question. Yeah. And Max is saying which XFL city, not a neutral site. All right, what do you think, Glass? <laughs> I'm going to start at a little bit of a, a homer kind of feel, but I like the smaller Seattle. atmosphere. Just get to it. Um, I, <laughs> I like Audi Field. I think Audi oh, Field. I oh, I thought it was Seattle. No, no. That's no, what I thought, too, actually. Well, actually. Well, I'm wearing a D.C. Defenders hat. And <laughs> yeah. He's such uh, a confused fan. I'm just a confused <laughs> fan. He's That's what it is. Okay, I, Mr. Jamie Virginia. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go uh, Audi Field uh, for a couple different reasons. One, I think the capacity makes a ton of sense. First year league, I think yeah. 20, 25. I think it seats 20,000. 20,000. 20, 20, yeah. I think it's perfect from an optics standpoint. Mm -hmm. Probably be able to sell Definitely out. raise those ticket prices. And they'll be able to raise the ticket prices. I think it's just going to be a great atmosphere to ultimately have a championship game at. Opposed if you have like a bigger mm -hmm. bigger place, a bigger stadium, um, say like New York, I think you may find some attendance issues. Like it just won't look as full. Do you think you for a championship I mean? game? I mean, I guess it depends who's in it. I, well, like I if New York's in it, then I think yeah, they well, could pack that place. But, but that's what I mean, right? So if they held it in New York, but it's it's Tampa Bay versus Seattle, like see who's going to try? That's who's why I think be able to pack. That's the games? why I think you kind of have to look more like Central. And I'm thinking yeah. Dallas because they just are renovating okay. the okay. Texas Rangers yeah. old ballpark, new stadium. So it's kind of a new. You know what? Stadium. I like that one. I think that's a good option. It's in too. Texas, yeah. so you have a ton of football yeah. fans. Yeah. Um, Dallas is probably going to be one of the better teams in the league based yeah. off initial, you know, looking at their initial roster. Yeah. So I could see Dallas being a perfect spot. And then I guess Houston, too, because well, that's, that's, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. Texas. Yeah. I mean, why not? College stadium. Training camp's there. Exactly. Yeah. So you're going to develop a fan base that has fans for all yep. eight teams. Yep. So no matter who plays in Houston, you're probably going to have fans makes there a, already. makes a ton of sense. Well, and, 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 and look, the obvious connections. The XFL obviously has super t super strong yep. ties with Houston. With Oliver Luck. Yep. To yep. do that, Luck has ties there. So it makes sense for their inaugural championship to be what yeah. they would consider their unofficial home. I know they're not based there, but. I'll tell you what, what about after this year? How about the winner of the championship? They host next year. Like their stadium. That would be cool. I would be opposed idea. to it. That'd I kind of cool. I dig the neutral site, though. I, I know you have to be kind of. You have to be careful about where that neutral site yep. came in. You have to take into account. Yeah. But, like, the XFL teams are kind of in this big U, right? Yeah. So, like, yeah. what what area that's not an XFL city would, would make sense? Like Indianapolis. Do you think, though? Because I love it's such that. a far you flight love from Indianapolis. Everybody. Don't I you? love Indianapolis. I've been I mean, there. It's a good venue. I've been there twice. And they, well, you got to think, though, any place that puts on, so, not going off topic, but the Indy 500, obviously, every mm -hmm. year, it's, it, Holds five hundred thousand people, you know, coming to come to that. Event. That's a week long event. Yeah, it's yeah. huge, yeah. and yeah. so the Indy knows how to put on big events. They do. I mean, they put on Super Bowls. Yeah, before. they, they know put on Final Fours, and they've before. been good. And they've been good. Yeah, yeah. Final Fours too. <laughs> Final Fours. They, they always. I always seem like no, I every mean, three years of Final Fours in Indy. No, know? it's a great. Yeah. It's a great location. I'm just. It's f it's farther away from all this. Like I was yeah. thinking, kind of like a New Orleans. Ooh. You know, you have Ooh, Tampa, like then that. the Texas. It's a fun. DC is kind of. Yeah. Not a not a bad plane ride there. I think I can the, see that. The, the reason I said DC was like the the stadium size was really the biggest one, so you could kind mm -hmm. of fill it out, and especially if like the defenders aren't in it, right? You're relying right. on fans from those teams to travel in, yeah. and for a first year league, how's that gonna like how's that gonna work, right? I yeah. think it just depends on how like the success of the league. I think that Houston or Dallas makes a ton of sense from the other perspective of like you have a one in four chance of getting a team in Texas uh, this, to, to, to yeah. be there, right? And then St. Yep. Louis also is not very far from Texas, yep. so that's an easy one as well. Pretty so drivable. Pretty drivable. Distances, so I think yep. you have a pretty fair opportunity to have decent attendance regardless of who's in the game. So, yeah, if I was a betting man, I'd say Houston. Or maybe you do it, yeah, maybe you do it in like a host, like an XFL city. But in like the Texans stadium, oh, that'd be cool. Like if, oh yeah, Reliant Stadium. Like that'd if you, if you cool. feel like yeah. you can yeah. get you know the attendance to where you can fill the place up. Yeah. Maybe you do it in a city that you have like and a fan like base. Showcase. Or you do it in a larger yeah. 
a larger yeah. venue. Because yeah. Gless, I honestly think they could do more than twenty thousand for their championship game. Maybe I'm being a little over ambitious. I, I would don't say know. twenty thousand should be like the standard for a regular season game. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah for sure. I think the championship. We're, we're looking at forty, fifty. Yeah, I, mean, I, I you think, would think at least. Which would Houston 40. Cougar okay. Stadium? I think seats about forty, forty-five thousand. Yeah. I mean, okay. look at the no, SES this, this championship at Frisco, Texas. That's, that stadium seats probably what about twenty-five, and that sells out almost every yeah. time. So, so I guess it's a point. Get Are you going to go yeah. to that by the way? We, so we've been twice in the last three years, but not this year, man. It's <laughs> a little. Expensive. You gonna pay? For, I was like, were they like four, five hundred dollar tickets? Yeah, and that was. I mean, this game is going to be epic. North Dakota State, they've they're like fourteen and zero at this point. JMU is fourteen and one. It's gonna be like that's right, dude. Our tickets were so expensive yeah, last yeah. time, and they're playing North Dakota State again, which means that the tickets will be just as expensive. Well, how big is the stadium? It's like twenty five thousand. Yeah, yeah. So that's with Audi, Audi Field. It's, it's so an MLS stadium, yeah. like yeah. 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 just like an Audi yeah. Field. Supply and demand, maybe. Yeah. 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 Well, but the other thing that's uh, just interesting about the size, like when we went the first year and it was JMU, and not to get totally off topic, but. It wasn't ex as expensive the first year because they played Youngstown State, oh, okay. and then the second year they played North, North Dakota, Dakota State, State, and we went, and it was like five hundred. I forgot how much we paid, but then we were talking to some people last night that say like n people from North Dakota they travel. Well, they buy their tickets in yeah. August oh, for wow. the game, so a yeah. lot of the tickets on the secondary market for the first time we went, they were just reselling it when they didn't go. Yeah. Right. Well, when you win, how many conference. national titles do they have? I know. Yeah. They need All to right, make right. a decision what, though. soon, though, don't they? With the XFL, don't they need to make a decision soon? I think so. I would, I would imagine yeah. they have to. I mean, if you uh, want to get tickets, pre-sale I mean, tickets. I would imagine. Least. I would imagine week one is probably a deadline. Right Pro around there. Probably week like one. Can, yeah. Let's just. It can't be whoever has the best record, right? Because you have no time to market the game. Yeah. Yeah. Because in your, your turn, be it's the, a one week turnaround. So the biggest downfall would be who has the best record. But if it's the best record at the end of the season, then that gives you at least two weeks to, to market it. But still, I mean, you're you're trying to really yeah. amp up your I, championship. You got to make it. You have your, yeah. That's yeah. the whole thing. You got to yeah, make exactly. it an experience. It's got to be like you have to aim to create a Super Bowl like atmosphere. Plus, how can you I think don't know cities can get that, to, get that together in two weeks? Like hospitality, no, that, that everything. Not yeah. if I think yeah. they got to announce it. I agree. I agree. Um, Media partners have to go there in advance and scout out like filming locations. Tell you what, though, this number seven Golden Grains. Is a phenomenal beer. That's, good, that's, what, I got. that's what I have in my oh, cup. Oh man, no. I don't have. Maybe it. it's I like just light enough. I'm a little jealous of your flights now. <laughs> yeah, man. So the, <laughs> I got to give Pastel that a shout out. He's the one. You know, I think let, let's do flights for the show. Flights like, are I'm always all money. in, man. Oh, flights yeah. are always money. All right, what is the second? So the question? second part of Max's question uh, is: What quarterbacks out of the ones available and potentially available would you guys want the XFL to sign, particularly Tampa, to improve the starter competition? Yeah, because they brought in three new quarterbacks what a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And I was surprised that Tampa wasn't one of the teams. You guys know I'm not as big on Aaron Murray. He's um, a good quarterback. But I think it's, it's interesting that he brought up Tampa. Um, and there's quarterbacks out there. Yeah. And then, obviously, once the NFL season ends, like, yeah. they'll be – We'll see who's right. you know, coming the, off the guys practice, on the practice squad. Yeah. Kenny, I know so. you had a couple on your list that were very interesting. Yeah, so I'm a big fan uh, and, and uh, John Wolford, which – no surprise. I'm There's a, a shock. I'm a Wake Forest <laughs> Talk guy. About homers. I'm a Wake Forest yeah. guy. He's a good quarterback, though. No, yeah. He, he played he, in the he, AAF, and he, he, he was he successful played well. in the Him and, yeah, him and Garrett Gilbert well. were by far the two best quarterbacks in the Absolutely. league. Absolutely. Like, it wasn't even close. Yeah. Um, and the Hotshots were one of the best teams, mm -hmm. you know, along with the Pollard. They're the only team to beat Orlando, I'm pretty sure. I think so, yeah. So, so I'm a big fan, man. The guy did... Uh, amazing work at Wake Forest. He yeah. he uh, let us. He's really started the revolution there uh, of what we've had as a football program the last five years. Um, he's a very underrated quarterback. He's undersized, unfortunately. He's like five eleven, he? maybe six foot in cleats. Yeah. So that kind of hurts him. But I mean, it still speaks. It still speaks enough where a guy that size yeah. gets continued looks in the what NFL. What do you see his strengths are? Is it more accurate? Is he's he very mobile. Arm? So he, he so when, when Wake recruited him, he broke all of Tim Tebow's high school records no in Florida. Oh, he was huge. He was massive. He broke all like Tim Tebow's state high school football records. Just didn't have the size, huh? Yeah, he was five eleven. So um, his strengths, he's None very of us do. yeah. <laughs> he's very mobile. He's got a he's got a decent arm. It's not a cannon. Guy to be five foot eleven. What are you guys <laughs> talking about? <laughs> He's he plays with heart. Yeah. He plays with heart. He works hard. He's a coach he's a on the field. He's a, coach he's a scrappy on the field. guy. He's scrappy. Yeah. That's right. But no, he, he's very mobile. Um, one of the things you'll notice is he can get outside the pocket, make things happen. He's a very improvisational quarterback. Um, wow, sounds a lot like Aaron Murray, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, seriously, though, wouldn't that be a good fit in Tampa? Yeah, it yeah. would be. It would if you want to, you know, if what, you lose Aaron you Murray or. Similar quarterback. Yeah. yeah. yeah but I, I think he's got to be the number one option on practice squads do, right now. It, do you guys off, like, the off? Top of your head, remember the other quarterback that they took in the draft? Like, I don't. That I, who I, took in the draft? That, Tampa. Well, 
something that's interesting is Quentin Flowers, Flowers was yeah. drafted Quentin as Flowers, no, but he was point. drafted as a running back. Yep. and I that's talked about he's my X factor. He can play some QB, but he's point. been taking snaps yep. at quarterback, yep. even though he was drafted yep. as a running he back. He was unbelievable at South Florida. Yeah. So Isn't that a quarterback from Oklahoma State that they yeah Ty, a Taylor or Cornelius yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. he's not, on he's not that a bad player right. either yeah. watch out for him and he's fresh I mean he's fresh out of college so he's he's got no rust right like uh, he's been playing yeah 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 so. I think of all the teams that probably need to add a little depth Tampa's definitely one of them I mean I don't know New York maybe add some depth behind McGloin McGloin maybe yeah um, I'm big on Brett Rippin. You guys know that yeah. before before the se- or before all of these signings, and yep. Brett Rippon was kept on the, bro- uh, the Broncos Big practice arms, squad. Huge arm. Yeah. He had he had the um, best arm strength out of everyone at the combine yeah. last year. Really Nothing really to sneeze at. I think that you bring him into DC as your third quarterback. Sorry, I'm not sure Vad Lee's going to make the team. <laughs> um, Sorry, um, but Pesto. you know we'll, we'll see. <laughs> not that Vad Lee's a bad quarterback. Vad Lee, you can no. multiple different. Ways. I mean, look at look at the DC quarterbacks right now. You have Cardell Jones. You have Tyree Jackson. Big guys, strong arms. That's Brett Rippon. He's got a strong yeah. arm. He could fit as that third quarterback and maybe even compete for the backup or who knows. You know, yeah. According to Kenny, he could maybe compete for the starting job. <laughs> so, <right? laughs> so that's a guy I think that D- I'm on. I think too. DC would be well would be well. That would be a stacked to quarterback. Get, to get a, another quarterback. I feel in like my DC opinion. has just so much potential when it comes to quarterbacks. Like Cardell Jones, like we saw what he could yeah, have been yeah. like from yeah. college, right? Yeah. And you have Tyree Jackson. He looked good when Goodness I was at many camps. Dude, but have you like seen, one of them has have to you catch seen fire, the, right? Have you seen the video, by the way, of no. Tyree Jackson at the NFL Combine no. last year? So you know the you know the the Combine um, drill where the receivers are running uh, uh, across the field and they're catching passes yeah, from absolutely. both sides. Yep, yep. Looking boom, 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 left boom. and right, yep. So Tyree Jackson, Steve Smith walked over there. Steve Smith, the former Carolina Panthers receiver. Yeah, great receiver. Walked over there and basically kind of yelled at him and was like, dude, you need to tone it down because everybody was dropping his pass. Because he was throwing it Like he was just, I mean, he was putting holes through him. I mean, the guy's what, six foot Yeah, six, dude six, has six, like seven. a freaking yeah. helmet for an arm. Yeah. Yeah. He's six, seven. He's a monster. So that's two guys right there. Is there that's anyone two. else that stands out, or should we move on? Let's well, need somebody, didn't you? Uh, I did. I, I think Jake Browning, but again, oh, that, that's, it's that, the Homer that, show. Of course he did. It's the Homer <laughs> show. <laughs> it's the so home like when we show. argued it's about Washington this, hat next. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> next. He's right. an East Coast team and a West. Coast By the way, team. I will say that last night we went to the JMU game. So. The only colors that I have that are purple and gold, which are JMU's colors, I three is like, sweaters. It, well, yeah, I, I probably should have asked past up. <laughs> but, but like, is, is Washington stuff. Nice. Well, like, Weber State also is purple and has, like, their W. Are oh, they really? So, like, no. I almost left my house with all, <laughs> le- like, my Husky stuff with, like, a W on the set in the middle of the st- <laughs> yes. I didn't even know that. I didn't that know that. Now great. I'm upset. <laughs> like, I, but past out, I didn't wear it. Right, yeah. I, I didn't wear it. So you didn't. You didn't. You were a good JMU fan. I appreciate that's that. Right. What do you think, Les? Like Seattle for Jake Browning? <coughs> yeah, I mean that, that, that that's the uh, most logical. They spot have for so him. many quarterbacks. But they so. have so many quarterbacks. But I think that he's on the practice squad with the Vikings now. He was a a a, a good college quarterback. I wouldn't call him a great college quarterback by any means. His record speaks for itself. Um, he's we're not smiling. Get into he's it. I'm smiling a because no one, no one, because outside of one season, he's been dreadful. Yeah, we're Which not going to have this argument. We're not going to have this argument. We got too much to get to. <laughs> we got too much no, to get fine. to. I, I think he's a logical choice, um, just from a yeah. marketing standpoint, a college um, experience standpoint. Now he's professional experience. He'd be a guy that I think would fit well in the XFL. Not even as a starter, maybe a backup somewhere. So I, I think. This type of like this league is kind of where his di- talent is. He's a dynamic player, right? He can run the ball too. He's not just an arm talent, right? Uh, I he, mean, he's small. He's a small guy. Yeah, he's a smaller. He's a smaller not guy. A big arm. They ran some zone read with That's him thought, at yeah. UW. They, he, they, they they did some quarterback run yeah. stuff with him. He wasn't totally this fragile guy who would sit right, back in the pocket. Right, yeah. But I think just from a marketability standpoint and a talent standpoint, this is. Like he's not an NFL quarterback. He's just he's just he's not. a player. He's a ball. He's a playmaker. Yeah. All right, Gless. Yeah. Let's, so, right, let's move we'll, on. We'll what, move what's on. the question you got? Yeah. So from uh, Dan Chacon on Facebook. So Ooh. thanks for submitting this. I actually think it's a really good question. Um, assuming that the XFL will succeed, which, which we think it will, which all four of us here we believe would not that be they here will. right now. If That's we didn't right. Think it was going to be. Where should the league consider expanding to? Now he mentions four here: Chicago, Boston, San Diego, and Oakland. Hmm. So I'll leave. So that let's to start you guys. with those four that he mentioned. So it was what? 
Chicago, Boston, San Diego, and what was it? Oakland? Not Oakland. Uh, San Diego and Oakland. Yeah. What? Which one do you think is the best candidate? Out it's of not Oakland. Four? I don't think. Yeah, and plus playing in Oakland Stadium would be awful. Yeah. That place is a dump. Yeah. That's why <laughs> Oakland's leaving. So what? I've been to Chicago one time, and that was a very fun city. Like. I think Chicago is a really good yeah. city out of all of these. I think that's probably your best bet. But the only thing, and I think I know where you're going. <laughs> yeah. um, right, go ahead, go Kenny. Ahead. Uh, go. I, I think Chicago logically, in my mind, makes a lot of sense. Um, but as far as attendance, I don't know if they'll get the attendance. Well, and I don't even say it's attendance because the first Chicago XFL team didn't really draw. But that's kind of what I mean. yeah. here's the thing. I love Chicago, yeah. but could you imagine playing football in Chicago in February? No way. Dude, it's, it's like. Well, I mean, they play in December. I, I don't you know. know the Bears. I don't they know, definitely never man. play in February. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> well, I, mean, but, I think but, February but, is worse than December. Yeah. yeah, but the league goes through all the way till what? End of May? April. 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 A- end of April. Yeah, end yeah. of April. So, yeah. I mean, About a month there. That'd be a tough sell. Mm. To get Dude, because you remember you'd the have to be well, very uh, strategic well, in your Remember the Min- Minnesota Vikings played that outdoor playoff game yeah. like two years ago, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. three years ago, and it was uh, it was what like zero degrees outside. No, I, I totally get Chicago is really cold in the winter time, mm. all that oh. kind of stuff. But like New York will probably be equally as cold. I don't know. I mean, it'll be similar, or, but or that's the same thing Boston. with New England. Not yeah, if you went to Boston, yeah. I mean, I get why cold. I get yeah. why you go to Boston because they're yeah. you know they're such passionate fans. Yeah. But the Patriots have been good for over a freaking decade, so it, yeah, obviously they're going to support the Patriots yeah, yeah. and be diehard it's a, fans. It's a good just sports area. I mean, yeah. just all their teams. Well, Boston like really well. embraces their sports. Yeah. Like they're like they might not embrace sports. I think you mentioned like, well, it helps Charlotte. That, yeah, Char- Pastel. I do. I think Charlotte would be a good talent. But, I, but I'm, I'm going back and forth on it because you look at what the XFL is doing. They're doing it in major markets. I don't think yeah, Charlotte right. necessarily is a major market. Yeah. Um, Charlotte did just get an MLS team. But they do have a good fan base. Like, I think they're good sports fans down there. Yeah. So I think Charlotte would be. I mean, be, is it any less than Tampa? You know, like, I know. Yeah. yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I think honestly, it, I think Tampa would be. Or, no, yeah, I meant in, I mean in terms of the size Tampa. of no, the you're city, right. the market. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I Charlotte's do. booming. Yeah, Charlotte's Charlotte would be a bigger market, market than Tampa. as far as people, though. You, yeah. you said it before. Yeah. Tampa is more of kind of like a retirement area outside of the, well, of the Oscars. We have right? a we have a, a a mutual friend who lives down there, and did you talk to him? And it's just like there's no sports. I mean, they've, there. they've yeah. struggled with people yeah. supporting their teams, but I think Charlotte is a. I think Charlotte. It would fit nicely in yeah. that you know that East Coast lineup. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what about? Well, I think I think Philly or Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, what about would be Vegas. Big. Ooh. Oh, I think Vegas is a home run. I think that's where they have to go. Yeah. They have, I think to, go to, Vegas, they have right? to go to Vegas. But with the Raiders going there next year, like, do you think it'd be too much competition in terms of marketing I, and building building a fan base? Here's the thing: if the league embraces gambling and betting and daily fantasy, which hopefully, they sport, which hopefully they will, which we're all four proponents of. I, man, I think Vegas is an ideal spot. Because I mean, I think that kind of makes it a flagship franchise. Vegas, actually. Vegas was like a flagship franchise yeah. for the first XFL, but they didn't have any competition. Like you're bringing yeah. a new NFL team. Well, like that's exciting. When they got Vegas, the ice so. hockey team, the Knights, right, the Golden mm-hmm. Knights, that fan base. I mean, they're they acted like they were there for 50 years. Like they surrounded that team, and, yep. they, and then. And Which I think they're the going to do with good. the Raiders. I think they're going to do the same oh, thing with the Raiders. Think the, the Raiders have a home run by moving there. Yeah, I agree. But my question is. They're going to all be so focused on this new NFL franchise. Are they going to worry about an XFL franchise? I, I, I get that they're, they're different I, times of the year. When you have so many different people coming to Las Vegas that they're just looking for something to do. Yeah. So outside of betting, if I want to be there for a week, I would love to go catch a, a football game as well. It's in another event. And I bet the events there would be crazy. Well, uh, Vegas is an event town. <laughs> they know yeah, how to put I mean, on the show. There's just events all the time. Well, it's and, and look, let's, it's got to be Vegas. And let's face it, it's got to be Vegas. Vegas. It's got to be Vegas. Vegas supports UNLV. Like, people go to UNLV football games and UNLV basketball right. games. Yep. Like, they're not, like, chumps out there. Right. The UNLV it's football terrible. is awful. They're <laughs> awful. They are but bad. people go. <laughs> they are the bad. people go. Yeah, I like the Vegas one, man. I like Charlotte a lot. That's a good one. I yep. think those are two solid ones. I wonder if they're going to stick, if, if expansion ever does come into play, are they going to stick with their original strategy of, like, the biggest markets yeah. we can find. Yeah. Other than St. Louis, they have an NFL I mean, Vegas team. is a big market, though. I mean, there's a lot. But I'm not talking about Vegas. Yeah. I'm talking about just, oh, over, just their general. overall just strategy. Okay. Now, it would have to be two right. teams, right? Because you don't want to have you don't want to have imbalanced conferences, right? Like, you would you would want to add, if you were going to expand the want a West Coast, Coast and an East Coast. A West and an East Coast. So, what, what would, so Charlotte would be in, uh, in, in Vegas. In, in, in Vegas. Vegas. Charlotte and Vegas. But, but I think Philadelphia and or, or, or Pittsburgh would be a Decent one. I don't Pittsburgh know if Pittsburgh could do a, a lot. I don't know if there's enough 
people in there to support it. So, for example, like Pittsburgh has the Penguins, the Steel. Like it's three. It's not a yeah. four. Correct. League City, right? Yeah, yep. They don't have a basketball team. Their setup is, it is big so enough? silly. Have you ever been to Pittsburgh? Yeah, I have. That yes. setup yeah. is silly. But Philadelphia is too man. I hate, man. It. I, I hate to say it because I'm Philly. not a Philly fan at all. But it is a cool setup. They yeah, all, all three places are are right there, and you have this awesome sports bar right in the middle. You have the, you have the Eagles Stadium. You have where the Sixers um, play, and then you have uh, and also the Flyers, and then you have the baseball stadium, and they all share a parking lot. Like it's kind of silly. Yeah, I mean. The West Coast is a little more tough. So for yeah. me, like, do they, and I mentioned, do they stick to the same strategy or do they go more of the AAF style and say, well, San Antonio brought in 25, 30,000 a game. Like, they were dying for a football team. It's a good team. question. It is. So do it's you go with, question. like, a San Antonio? Yeah, I know question. you have two teams in Texas already, but if yeah. you, if Texas you like, football. this market has been tested and it works. Like, you, know, you could have some cool rivalries if you bring in a team to yeah. San Antonio. I know it's a little bit smaller, but it's also what a really cool Nashville? City. I feel like Nashville won in the And area. I was going to mention Nashville yeah. as another, even though that wasn't an AAF team. Right, it's right, a little bit I'm smaller in the market. Yeah, like Memphis didn't work out too well, I don't think. But yeah, it was. Well, yeah, and I like Memphis, but Memphis doesn't even, the Memphis Tigers don't even sell out an AAC championship game yeah. there. So, I mean. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, when you compare Memphis to, to Nashville, yeah. I mean, Nashville is the bigger, the brighter city, the, a lot more people. Like, I think just the opportunity in it's Nashville. It's just more glamour name. It's just more glamour, right? It's a, which is what the XFL is trying to do. They're trying to make this a glamorous brand. Yeah. Like, yep. you're not going to put a team in Memphis, I don't think. No. Hey, I got one, guys. Go ahead, go ahead, Ricky Kearns Jr. from Facebook. Fantasy football. Hey, nice. I think it was a SpongeBob SquarePants meme. That's <laughs> <laughs> a fantasy football. So I think we should just go, you know, I mean, obviously he didn't give us much direction. He just said, fantasy how football. Much, how much more do you need, man? Well, obviously, right. if you look at fantasy football, you can't go more than eight teams in a league, which I, is a little tricky, right? But No, I mean, I disagree with that. I think it would be more of a... Uh, I mean, you can only have one quarterback. Maybe it's all flex positions. And maybe... I don't know why I like maybe it's a Now you're making it, like, way complicated. Why? Because you have to devalue quarterback You points. devalue quarterbacks. You'd put, like, maybe three points for a yeah. touchdown. One point for every 30 yards. So now instead of a quarterback getting yeah. 30, 40 points, they're now more down to earth and getting 10 to 15. But you don't like you, you say, devalue the you position in the play. Okay, I, so get, I get where you're going. Well, I think I you, you need going. to make it simple so fans can play. I think like, you, I mean, that, you, that makes sense to us. If you do eight teams, then like, what if I'm a if I pick a quarterback and in the second round I pick another quarterback? Like, I automatically have two of the starting quarterbacks what, on what, my team. What if it's you, like daily? You put a roster restriction on there. What if it's like daily fantasy? Right, where you're given a cap. Daily and fantasy, then, that's and where then, you got to go with Right, it. and then yeah. so your team, you, yes. you essentially refresh your team every week. Yeah. And then every every Saturday or sun, or that's a good point. every Saturday or Sunday, you just have to set your lineup, and then you get a certain cap, and you pick and go. I do think daily would be, if I yeah. had to choose one for the XFL, daily would be. See, I'm not big into overseas. daily. Um, I don't play it I, too often. Y- so. You don't, but I'm telling you, I, I think with the limitation of teams, I think it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. You're given a certain budget. You can spend. You think they should just focus on daily and not have like a. Well, I think as the league it expands teams and you just have more players yeah. to select from, I think that you'll be able to do the kind of fantasy football that we're all used to. But when you're an eight, it, that really limits to what you can do unless you really change the rules. Correct. Right, but I think daily fantasy kind of adds I mean, it a limit. unique. It limits. It's a lot of the amount of to do people that you can have in. I don't know how much yeah. it limits. For a season-long league. It just, you know, it limits the amount of people you can have in the league. But well, other a, than uh, that, does it really limit It's a very dynamic you? league, too. So, like, I think we're going to – we don't know who necessarily is that good yet. And yeah. so, like, week to week, we're going to find out players that are better than yeah. what we that's thought right. or not as good as than what we thought. So, like, a daily fantasy, I'm with you, Gloss. I think Who that's, would that's be, like, your to top players if you were drafting fantasy off the top of your head? It has to be a mobile quarterback, right? Would it? Because, or would you – I mean, I guess it depends. I mean, what I, I'm, taking, I'm taking whoever is the quarterback in Houston. <laughs> right, he can be throwing tons of touchdowns. Throwing, yeah. Or would you take like Sammy Coates, uh, who was who was a beast at minicamp from all accounts? Yeah, and he was good in the NFL too. I mean, yeah. yeah, well, you're gonna yeah, you're gonna have yeah. Houston would go first. I mean, you're all the offensive skill players in Houston you'd want. And yeah. I mean, like, unless if, especially if it's PPR for a running back. Yeah, like, like I wonder, good. I wonder if it's gonna be like the same kind of strategy. Like you wait on quarterback, or if you have to grab one because it's only eight of them. Yeah, um, there's not like yeah. a huge. You know, like in for the NFL, it's like you can get off the waiver wire a decent quarterback. Where the who, XFL, that won't be the case. So, who do you think? Who do you think would be like, like? So, for me personally, I think DraftKings and ESPN is a logical choice to carry a season ESPN, long yeah, definitely. and a, well, and there's a some daily ties fantasy. to the league. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, is, it, is Vince a, a principal? Is he an investor? In yeah, he's he's he's, he's an investor in it. And okay. then ESPN is obviously a media partner. I don't think Fox has like a season-long fantasy no. football. If they do, it's not very I popular. I've never right. used it. 
Um, so I, I think logically, those two, if they were announced, wouldn't be shockers. Makes sense, yeah. yeah. And and I, I think where the league can really capitalize on a lot of its, um, I'm sorry, in order to gain popularity is really kind of embrace daily fantasy, fantasy, and then we're going to get into a little later, I'm sure, but like really embracing the gambling part of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think that's really where this league can gain a ton of traction. Yep. Right. I mean, people are going to be, eyeballs will be on the game if you got money on the game. Absolutely. Yep. Right. Yeah. So, well, yep. they have to put a lot of emphasis into fantasy because that's I agree. a big part of why the I NFL agree. is so huge. Well, absolutely. You get to know players that you would have never gotten to know without fantasy, right? You follow yeah, that's a good point. It'll be a great way to get to know the players. You follow yeah. teams that you don't ever follow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right now, we got, we're all in like our, our semifinals other, yeah. or our championship right championship. now. I'm sweating like, bullets over here, man. I'm sweating bullets <laughs> not being able to check. Are we all in championship games? Because I'm in a championship game. I'm in a championship game. Me and you are in a championship as well. I could win $1,200, bucks, man. <laughs> the big There's a lot on the line <laughs> right now. That is a lot. That is a lot. But right now, like the Bengals versus the Dolphins, which unfortunately is both of our favorite teams. <laughs> but most people could care less about that game. But right yeah. now, Kenny's got Joe Mixon on his team. Let's like, go, Joe. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, oh, Fantasy Fitzpatrick. Football. You know what's crazy is Fitzpatrick is starting against I like you, Fitzpatrick. right? He's starting and against me. Patrick. In and championship it's just, games. It's just killing me. How is Ryan <laughs> Fitzpatrick starting in a fantasy football team? Because he's playing Cincinnati. Because he's, he's playing, playing freaking Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Which we will be good next year once That's we get right. Joe Burrow. All right, all right. I want to do a check in with Pastel here since we're we're doing the flight. Brandon, I'm so what excited. Is your, what is your most By the way, favorite? I hate this strategy. This is awful. That you mix it like you're no, like. No, I, oh, I, I like Gless, strategy. Gless strategy. Look, Gless was done with it. I was saying, you the bar in the middle of the show. I'm time. excited to like watch this again and just see Gless <laughs> housing these bear, these yeah, beers. You're like right sipping now. over here. Do, well, because I'm a, one of those guys that want to really taste my beer. I want to rate my but, beer. Yeah, but you Changing can't because the palate. Yeah. Like your palate's all This is awful. My palate is fine. You need to get too worried about my palate. Don't worry about my palate. But if you want to talk about the favorite beer that I have, right? Yeah. This is one that's not on the menu, and it is so good. Which one? So. They mix number two and number eight, which number two is the Woods Mill Pale Ale, and number eight is the Double Dry Hop Double IPA. They mixed it into this one right here. It's really smooth. I had it earlier. It's actually really good. It's phenomenal. It's really good. It is phenomenal. So you know sometimes with like IPAs, you can either get like a a, a fruity initial taste and it's really bitter on the back end, or or vice versa, like whatever, it takes it away. It's just smooth all the way through. Nice. What's your favorite so far, Glass? Um, I like number two. Uh, Number two is by far my favorite so far. Brandon, can you read which one that was? (laughs) Glass is going to have to go back to the bar in the middle of the show. Number two is like, hold on, I can't. (laughs) Number two (laughs) is the the Woods Mill Pale Ale, the one that's mixed with my number eight. Well, I love Pale Ale. I'm a big Pale Ale guy. Now, here's the real thing, guys. I have yet to sip this one. Brandon, can you read... The description for number 11. Oh, please. man. The cranberry fizz. Why does, he, why does he have the menu, by the way? The guy that can't read in public. You want to hand this off? <laughs> cranberry fizz. <laughs> Two out of five uh, bitterness. It's a three out of five sweetness. Fresh cranberry, juice orange, local honey, like and just right amount of holiday sparkle. Ooh, Ooh, so it's a holiday okay. thing. So I, I want to taste this right now. And I'm gonna give you a review. Give us a reaction. That? That? I do it. like the. I do like this. I'm a big fan of oranges. It's like a blue moon. And especially, I like. That's it what like you think about blue moon. So which... Dan. No, yep. Yeah. Mm. Oh god. That was a hell of a bite, like man. How, once Gless got a few beers in him, he's back to his, you know, his old self. Oh yeah. <laughs> he's, he's looking we a little. More, there's a little more color in the face. <laughs> All right, here we go. He's not as shaky. <laughs> <laughs> I love how he just ate the whole orange. <laughs> What about the rest That's of the beer? That's what men do, Pastel. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I, I, let me tell you, this is probably all I'll have of it. Like, I won't go order a pint of it. Let me try it. Let me try it. What's your favorite? Number two, though? Number two, the Pale Ale, uh, for sure. That's it's definitely my favorite For all you dark beer, beer lovers. Oh, I this, love that, man. Dude. That, that's good. Yeah, have a sip. Have a sip. See, I like the darker ones. This basically stout. I definitely would legit. get that. I had that. giving me my, so, so the other cool. one over there? So that's nice. One. So Riley. It's not bad, Kenny, right? That's nice. I like that. That was my second favorite was that. Oh, really? The stout that you have. We're all getting yeah. our second beer at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. I like the golden grains. All that's right. So one. should we move on? For um, sure. For sure. Yeah, you want, on. Wait, you just went. Should I go? So you're up. All right. So Derek John on Derek. Facebook, he said the five major rules in the rule book that will separate the XFL from other leagues. I love this question. I wish the XFL rulebook had yeah. come out by the time we did yeah, the show. Yeah, that would been we awesome. Do know that, we do know some of the rules. I talked to Oliver Luck up in D.C., what, a week or two ago, yep. and I asked him what, what rule he was most excited to see, and he, it was the 25-second play clock. Yes, um, absolutely. Because that just that impacts everything, yep. every aspect of the game. Does. I mean, God, that's, that's not a lot of time. Which is why we, I think one of these questions Less talks about the communication helmets. Mm-hmm. That is vital if you're going to have a 
five second play clock. And it's gonna be so yeah. fast. I mean, games are gonna go fast. That's good yeah. though. That's fun. No, that's no, what no, they no, want. No. I yeah. agree. No, it's like it's like the last two minutes of a game See. for for two hours. I think it'll be extremely Think about the game we went to product. last night, Jamie versus Weber State. Those last four minutes were so painful because they were just calling timeouts. Yeah, they, they were just awesome. stopping the clock. I want to see the game go. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's gonna be a fun rule that's implemented. Yeah, into I do XFL. like that. Yeah, keep keep the ball moving, keep the game flowing, and and less. Co- well, it's gonna be less commercials too. Yeah, that's gonna, that's what that's gonna yeah, help. Yeah, makes sense. I think we know the overtime rule is happening too, which is yep yep. Um, very interested to see how that's gonna be implemented. Obviously, they tested it though. So, so what is it exactly? Is the overtime? They're rules? on the field at the same out? time. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, think of it as like, um, like a soccer shootout. You're or gonna like a hockey shootout. Those are yeah, always yeah. fun. Like those are a blast. You're gonna to watch. have. Both teams, I, al- I always have to slow down with this so I don't yeah. mix it up. Yeah. You have Team A, uh, offense on one side. Team B, defense on one side. Then you go to the other side of the field. At the same time, on the field, you have Team B, offense, and Team, team A, a defense. Yep. So basically, one side goes, they run a play. Then there's a, like a 30-second break. Next side goes... And it goes back and forth. And I can't remember if it's best of five or if it's first of five. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you score, it's like a point. If the defense gets a turnover, it's a point for, you know, their team. Yeah. Can, by the way, can you imagine if you get to, like, the, the third or fourth like play? Like a sudden Like death? the change of strategy. Oh, yeah. Like, that's Absolutely. what's going to be so awesome about it is the change Pull of strategy from play to play based on what the other team did on the other side of the My field. My biggest question about it is, like, it sounds – awesome in theory yeah and they say it should take no more than 10 minutes so you're in you're out there's a winner you're not going through a whole quarter yep. Yep. and you're ending in a tie yep. like you're going to find out within 10 minutes who's winning this game my question is how logistically do you pull this off like with the referee crew like are they literally going to be on a golf cart or something like one play goes and then they all hop on like a clown car and they freaking drop down I, to the I, other I side i love it man it's like I, the bullpen I, cart i, I kind of hope teams pull the bit that like we you know we're big Nats fans that Tom Coffey used to do Todd Coffey oh, which was when he would run him from the bullpen they would time him yeah. because he'd be in a full on dead sprint uh, so I kind of as a hope fan that, I would love that <laughs> I kind of hope that they do that they have like a referee clock that like, it's a referee combine you're taking out referees forty times <laughs> to see if they you can, can imagine make it a in ref time. like in mid sprint and he just blows a hammy oh, oh we've seen that before, down. Man. Oof. So I, that'll yeah, be interesting. That is a cool rule. Though I think I, I like the rules that are gonna help facilitate bringing back punt returns and kick returns back. I was gonna say that. That I, was where I, was I, I like go. that. It's I like really lost in football these days. I feel yeah. Like. Oh yeah. yeah. They're definitely focused on bringing the special teams uh, play back. Yeah. Into sometimes the, game. the fun is playing football. Exactly, yeah. and it's well, gone basically. In the everybody yeah. remembers Hester and the human joystick. Oh, uh, man. Remember Hall? Oh, oh, Dante, Dante Hall. Dante Hall Dante Those days are over in the NFL. I out of all the rules. I could see the NFL, because you know how they copied the XFL back in the day with a lot of the things they did in terms of like mm-hmm. the production? I could see the NFL looking at the XFL um, with these new kickoff rules and seeing that, that play back into the game, that excitement, and be like, hmm, maybe we should look into doing something like this. Well, and because like, right now the kickoffs yeah. are completely pointless. Yeah, I am very curious to see what rules the NFL does adapt from the XFL. Yeah. I think that... I think that's I think, number one. I, yeah, I think what will eventually happen is when this league, again, really starts to take yeah. off and they the NFL sees what fans like, similar to what the NBA did with the ABA, right? The mm-hmm. three-point line came from the ABA, yeah, that's right, yeah. right? And they adopted it. I think you'll see yep. similar type of things. Well, because the NFL's big concern was, like, the safety, right? But this yeah. is a great way to still be very safe when it comes to football but still keep the kick return. I actually think return. it's safer. Yeah, because you don't safer. have, like, wedge you don't have, busters you know, and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. You don't have all this yeah. stuff, you know. You don't have those high-speed collisions where yeah. both – Yeah, I, I love it. I, I love every rule that's been talked about and rumored about for the kick and punt returns. I love it. I, I want to see that back the, in the game. The, I, I know they talk about the double lateral, and I still don't fully comprehend from a schematic People are making scale. such a big deal. It makes it simpler. I, I, I don't know what it, it simplifies the game, in yeah. my opinion. As long as it's behind the line of scrimmage, then you're fine. Like, you throw the ball, yeah, they catch it. People need to be like yeah. rugby where people are, like, going, you yeah. know, down the field. But, but I guess from a schematic standpoint, I'm trying to figure out in my head, like, how can a coach take advantage of that roar? Or, or, like, why is that even necessary? Like, why is it even necessary? I guess that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, what type of plays are now in play because... I don't think it will have a big, like, change on the like, game. Like, it's not a big impact, But when the right? quarterback throws it to the receiver... The, re- the, the the umpires aren't gonna have to like look at it again and be like, oh, was it in forward pass? Was it rear pass? Like they're yeah. just gonna catch it and throw it. As long as it's behind the, the line of scrimmage, then it's fine. Like it yeah. just makes the game simpler, which is what the XFL is trying to do. Right? One rule that I'm glad which, they- which is fine, and I buy that. I, I'm just trying to think of they 
it, it's kind of come out. You just hope yeah. it doesn't turn gimmicky. That's what I just, yeah. I don't yeah. want to do. Yeah, like, but you I can't turn gimmicky. Like, defenses would, like, I don't know, man. that you put, you put these like. eight head coaches in a room, I'm sure they can figure out how to do it. Well, none I'm of these coaches would be yeah. on board if they if there was gimmicks involved. I agree. The most gimmicky of these rules, to me, is the one, two, three-point conversion. I don't I know. I actually just, love that. Just hearing three-point conversion sounds cool. I like, three point I I like it. Fan. Fan. I like it. I think it's going to make but games you know, so I know why they did the it. End. Like, all of these rules are to, one, increase scoring, yep. increase excitement, yep. pace of play, and they want to keep games close. Yep. Correct. So that's why that three-point So you're never out of it. I get yeah. it. Yeah. Um, the it. comeback period, which I really hope that they implement. Yep. I mean, you're down by nine points with, like, the last two minutes You're still in it. You're still in it. You're still in the game. Here's a scenario. So think about this. So... Um, you're down eight points, and you go dry. Like you're down eight, right? Generally in the NFL, like you'd have to score get a two point conversion, right? That's mm -hmm. that's that's pretty tough. But you're on the twenty, and you got two minutes left to go, and you're Houston. So the clock stops, right? Which that's another rule. So, yeah, the comeback period. Right, yep. it, comeback period. So you got time, and you get down there. And what if you just start picking them apart? Left, right, ten yards, twelve yards, thirty yards, twelve yards here, and you're June Jones, and you're like. Screw it. Let's go for the win yeah. from the ten yard line for a three pointer. That would be right. Awesome. Like, that like, would be sweet. can I can't even imagine what would be going through my veins as I'm watching that actually unfold in front of my like in front of my face. Cause yeah, we're, we're not used to it. That's why yeah. I like it. I think it'd be. It, we're gonna see some epic endings. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be, fun it's gonna to be watch. epic yeah. endings. Well, it, it makes sense too because it's designed so the fan doesn't turn away. Yeah. Like if your team's down 15, keep, 20 keep points on the in channel. the second half, you still know they can come back pretty easily. I mean, the strategy is spot on. Yeah. Like, yeah. I totally get why they're doing what it. What used to be a three-possession game is no longer a three. It's a two-possession game. All right, Kenny, what, let's move on. What, what do you got here? Yeah, Matty O from YouTube. And, Matty, we appreciate the uh, kind words. Matty. says, best wishes to the XFL and XFL Chalk Talk yep. as we approach kickoff. I believe this league will be successful considering the foundation cultivated before launch. But what is it going to take to grow the league so the Carolinas can get another professional hey, football there team? Go. There you go. And in parentheses, We're with you, Matty. And in parentheses, <laughs> he says, I'm not bitter about the Panthers or anything. Just saying. <laughs> Sounds like you're a little bitter, Matty. Sounds a little bitter. Can, can I start on this one? Because yeah. Brent and I were talking about this on the, on the way here. Um, I think the constant media coverage is what's really going to grow this league. Yeah. The ability to be featured on Sports Center, your front and center. And you know, ESPN right? is all in, and, man. And they're all they're in all on the in. XFL. So it's a, it builds credibility for that median fan, right? They're like, hey, I could watch an NBA game like of you know the Hornets versus the Pelicans or like the Hornets versus Spurs, or I can tune over and watch some football that's actually that, that is also on ESPN, and I know that those highlights are going to be there, and they're really going to make a big deal out of it. I think is. As the continued media hype keeps going from 100%. ESPN and 100%. ABC and, and and all the partners, that's what's going to be vital to this league's success and to make give it that credibility that other leagues have never had. Credibility and exposure too. Yeah, like just getting those yeah. names out there on ESPN or people yeah. are going to follow them more. I mean, more. you've got Adam Schefter tweeting about right. XFL I mean, stuff right now. It's unbelievable. It does instrumental. Like no, just big time stuff, the and you're going to get those haters like with the stupid memes. Nobody cares. People care, yep. and it's building. I mean, people they are will so care far if ESPN tells them they care. <laughs> yeah. Let's be honest <laughs> with you, it's right? It's you, Brandon. You made the point. UFC. Yeah, yeah it, go, it, go on your point. I, I thought mean, it was a really good point. It, it, it's, a, it's a quick point though. I feel like UFC was at a high point maybe ten years ago, right? Um, and then it kind of slowly went downhill, maybe because the lack of fighters. Besides maybe Conor McGregor, Ronda Rousey. Right. But as soon as ESPN put, picked up UFC, like, I started watching it more. Like I feel like it kind of made it's UFC like a little bit more like cultural more, sports yeah. channel yeah. that yeah. It people is. go to. Yeah. And, you know, I know their numbers have declined over the years because there's so you know you know FS1 other other channels yeah. are picking up their content in terms of sports. Yeah. But they're still by far and away the king. Yeah. So yeah. if you have yeah. ESPN backing you 100, percent I mean, Shoot. there was a tweet that came out earlier this week that said reports are that ESPN is all in on the XFL. Nice. I mean, that's, that's big time stuff. That's and huge. that means like programming, like studio shows, yep. highlights on sports. Behind the highlights scenes. on no, sports. Yep. No yep. other Original al alternative leagues have gotten that in the past. Yeah. No. The first XFL definitely didn't. No. The AAF, you know, that maybe if it was a great play, it was in the top 10 or something, but there was no extensive coverage yeah. 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 of the AAF. Absolutely. Like this, this setup, having ESPN. And you know their personalities, like Adam Schefter, their funding, you know, just just their reach in general. Yeah. I mean, it is it is 
so big time. Yeah, my question though is like the product on the field, right? Like I think eight teams is a good a good number right now, yeah. just because the, the available players that yeah. we have out there. Once you start extending it to 10, 12, 14 teams, how many more players you lose that depth are yeah. out there? So the, it's really it's the actually depth a really portion. good point. Yeah, I so like I, I think really eight teams is a that. great start. I can't see it getting more than ten in the future, um, just because at the least for the players. first couple of years. Yeah. Few, yeah. yeah, you don't want to spread yourself too thin. Right. That's for sure. You want to have quality product, yeah. field, which is what the XFL is going to have this year. Uh, but when do they expand? Yeah. And Maddie, if if you want a team in the Carolinas, you guys have to watch. Like, you, if you that's, don't think if you don't think right. regional TV ratings is going to play a big deal on where oh, they're going to expand sure. to next, like they're going to look at where they're getting the most viewership and say that's where we need to go. Especially since the, you know they obviously are looking at larger markets. So if you're in a smaller market, your chances aren't great. So you have to have those ratings. You have to yep. have the attendance. So yeah. if they look at like NFL teams yeah. and they're not supporting that NFL team, why would they bring? An XFL. Agreed, bring an XFL. I, I think a good model to look at is if you look at, at Atlanta and what they've done with the MLS soccer team down there. I mean that, I mean they, it's unbelievable the kind of numbers yeah, that they, that. They but sell, the like, legends they were sell a disaster. So the, le- <laughs> the, the legends were the legends disaster. were a disaster, but the MLS team was unbelievable Did the they kind win of the numbers. They s- yeah, I think so. No, the Sounders won it. Oh, the Seattle okay. team won it. They, they were good. They were good. They sure. were good. Yeah. But the Atlanta franchise brings in unbelievable TV viewers and I mean they are in love with that team so to Kenny's point when we talk about regional you know regional affiliation and just just a buzz around the team in the area like that's a really good model to look at so to your point you want a team in Charlotte like Charlotte's got to rally around the franchise right or they're going to go to Boston because Boston's going to get the eyeballs I bet they will yeah it's good yeah all right Pastel what do you got yeah 2020 hindsight on Twitter Rules, season predictions, best XFL football players, league innovations, like the simultaneous audio for offensive players. That's a lot to take in. That's a so lot. I think lot. season predictions <laughs> we'll do we'll do separate segments yeah. as yeah. we get closer to the season. Rules we've already covered. Um, let's talk about the league innovations part, man. Like we mentioned that earlier, right? With the with the audio, that's like it, yeah. I feel like that's it's gonna be it's gonna be very stressful making sure it all works properly. Mm-hmm. I hope that they've been doing ample they had testing. To have tested it at this right. Point, right, but it's so necessary with the. I'd play imagine box, they right? have it live in minicamp right now. Yeah, like I'd imagine they all have. that'd be awesome. Like listen to right, like yeah. as a fan, like oh my goodness, you get like that. what if it was like NASCAR where that'd you can have like a scanner? That would be so that sick. Like, so sick. That that sick. <laughs> That's the biggest <laughs> reason I like going to NASCAR. Well, other than tailgating, right. if you had that with the XFL app, you're doing live betting, you got that in your ears, man. It'd be a fun event to go yeah. to I'll tell you that yeah plus you're, you're, you're a pretty big fan of the the I am because audio. I'm a defensive guy yeah. right like if if offenses are moving in or out or if it's two minute um for like to call a defense out there and make sure that communication is straight like there's multiple kind of um centers of communication out there whether it's multiple assistant coaches whether it's the linebacker is getting the call and he's trying to tell all the other 10 guys I think it's it's very difficult, and you have a lot of other stuff going on. The offense is on the ball, so it creates a very reactionary environment. Yeah. So I think if you have the defensive coordinator or a coach who's designated that is just talking in your ear, I think it just makes it a lot easier for communication to get all set and ready to go. Well, speaking of the ball, that's why I really like it. You picked it. up an X football football, right? That was a league innovation that. Yeah, the ball And I love great. it, man. Just by you know, I didn't really get a chance to throw it too much, but just by the grip, they're just trying to make. You know, you see by the rules, by the, you know, things that they've Im- yep. implemented in terms of gameplay. They just want to set their players up for yeah. success. Yeah. And this ball is, you know, you know, it's one you of get those a good aspects. Grip on it. You get a really good grip on it. Yeah. Um, with NFL balls sometimes, like, I struggle with the grip, especially if they're wet. Slippery, yeah. And then the first XFL ball, we all know about that. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch the ESPN documentary. Yeah. Like, it became a rock if it got wet. That is not the case here. Like, the grip is so good on it. The laces, I love the laces. Mm-hmm. It's not like over the top grip where like everyone's so like, gonna catch everything, but it definitely I think is gonna enhance. So in what weather we're pretty much not gonna see a bad product on the field. Exactly, I think you know because I think they took that into account, right? Yeah. They like have DC, to. New York, Seattle, like they know that you know we could have some rough weather yeah. for like February and yeah. maybe some of March. So like we that's, gotta. And that's a good point. Cold weather, like that's a hard a ball. That's the ball hard comes slick. Like, right. Right. Yeah, calling it very slick. So right? yeah, that's why everybody on it. Well, wears all yeah. these gloves that are basically like. Glue. Yeah, it, glue. The I way know. that they made the ball, it's yeah. it, you know, it's much tighter of a spiral. Nice. The X is on the tips, Help so receivers it, and yeah. DBs Track can it. locate it better. It's what I think so cool about it is if you look kind of a little bit, you know, for context, you look a little bit back in history. Like you look at the ABA, 
<laughs> right? Like the ABA had the, 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 the white, tri-colored yeah. ball, That's right. which was fun yeah. that people liked. It, it wasn't gimmicky because it was still a basketball. Yeah. Oh, right. this ball right. looks sharp. But, but There's no but, gimmick but, about it. It looks good. Right, but that's what I mean. Is it, It's just another branding point more than anything, mm -hmm. right? Because, I mean, a football is a football. I don't know how much you can do to really impact the game from a football, even though the innovations that they do, I, I think, are really solid. Yeah. But from a branding standpoint, it makes it look a lot different than what we're used to seeing in a football. Absolutely. Right? So it's, yeah. it's just that other brand point in your head of, oh, that's an XFL football, right? It's another impression. So that, that's what I think is genius about it. I'll say this. Season predictions, probably not what you were thinking, uh, hindsight 2020. But I bet the NFL adapts at least three rules that the XFL has into the next year's prediction. Uh, do, you think, do you think so? That I, quickly? I, I, I bet the kickoff, the special teams rule. Yep. One, they had to relook the overtime rule. Like, that, that is. Yeah, I agree. It's just not fun. I don't know if they'll go to this. Maybe not but this. But it mean, it it's going to be a factor to into it. them changing their rules. And then not to mention just the less – Less stall, more ball mentality. Maybe not to a 25 second clock, but mm -hmm. I bet they do something to implement yeah. ways for people to watch a faster football game than a slower game. Yeah, I agree. That's a good prediction. All right, let's move on. Jeremy Grace on Facebook. The recent releasing of Sean Oakman and Jeremiah Spicer by the LA Wildcats, and will they end up anywhere else? So that's number one. And then two, he asked about our overall thoughts on the DC defenders, how they looked on offense and defense. So let's start with number one. It was kind of surprising news with the Sean Oakman piece of it because, like, <laughs> literally three or four days yeah. before he was waived, they're, like, featuring him in, yeah. in you know, uh, social media videos. Makes sense he was one jacked. of the guys that repped the uniform. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Kenny, I know you said... I, I said this earlier. Even if Sean Oakman was the worst player on my team, he would have been the number one guy I picked to rep my new uniform. <laughs> right. He's the guy that gets off but the it's bus still, first. You know, yeah. It's still, like, it's, it's kind of surprising that you're going yes. yes. to put him out there yeah. so much. On, and they really pushed him on social media. Yeah. And then one day he's Nick. So, um, to me, it's, it, I think it's more off the field. There were, there were rumors on Twitter, I don't know if you guys saw, mm -mm. about him like getting too physical in non-contact drills. It makes sense. Not listening to coaching to, when they were telling him to, you know, yeah. step it Shocker. back. <laughs> but I don't know if that's Shocker. true or not. Those are just rumors. That's right. so yeah. rumors. That's we don't un, know that's yeah, I don't want to put reason. allegations on a player yeah. like that. I we agree. don't know the true reason of why he was yeah. waived. But I think with his past history, it definitely doesn't help his case no. of getting picked up again. And Jeremiah Spicer... Like, we talked about this before. It's a like, feel-good story. It was a feel-good story. We are 100% behind a story like Jeremiah Spicer, but at the end of the day, it's a business, man. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. So let me take that first one. I mean, th this guy obviously has off-the-field issues. Um, it sounds like something off-the-field happened. Just it was wasn't very quick. Showing up. Yeah. It was very quick. It was Th swift. That's the assumption. Uh, yeah. That's the assumption that we're all yeah. going off. So um, maybe I think it just depends on kind of the – uh, the crime that was done, maybe he gets picked up, maybe he's not. We just don't know. Mm -hmm. We don't know what happened mm -hmm. other than he was waived. It is right? what it is. If you're a better football player, you have more leeway, right? A little bit more of a that's, leash. That's right. Um, and maybe he's not at that point where, like, he do right. one off the field incident. Like, you cut him because he's not that yeah. good. Or maybe he was signed and drafted. He was drafted and signed basically with the assumption of, hey, man, like, you got one shot. Yeah. And, and when – if you're going to go around, screw around and – Whatever the, whatever the allegation well, was and the reason he was waived, like, that's probably what happened. Well, well going back to the to the main point of the question is, do, do they think we'll, they'll end up anywhere else? Uh, no. Short answer, no. No, no. I, think uh, no, no, I don't think either will. Definitely not Jeremiah Spicer. I mean, that was, like, his hometown, right, L.A.? Yeah. Like, that was the feel-good story. If they didn't keep him, it's probably because yeah. of the, well, look, the product and, on the field. And at the end of the day, if you get cut in OTAs in minicamp in a startup league, if one of two things happen, either you messed up really bad or you're just, you just, you just don't have Which it. I think is the case for but yeah. also, both of you. But also, guys. look at the type of offenses that these teams are going to be running. A lot of air raid concepts, right? A lot of, you you got to have speed. speed. I, I love Jeremiah Spice. I love his story, and I wish the best for him. But I just don't know if he has the speed to play linebacker against these type of offenses. Yep. Yeah. All right, let's go to the second question. Overall thoughts on the D.C. defenders. How do they look on offense and defense? So mm -hmm. I had the – Yeah, you would know. Yeah, yeah I was at yeah, minicamp. I was at minicamp last week. Yep. Hand me that lighter when you're going around. <laughs> I was, I've been hogging <laughs> it all so <laughs> I'm saying, My bad, man. When's a, when's a good <laughs> time to ask? <laughs> just, just We're ask like in-depth talking about the XFL, and I just, I just want the lighter. You're just staring at the lighter. So right. I will say this. The day I was there at minicamp was the offense's worst day of minicamp. Yeah. Um, they even said that in their recap. <laughs> this was the offense's worst day. Okay. And it definitely showed. The defense was flying, man. They were getting in the backfield. 
they had got they caused like three or four turnovers when it got to the team drills. Nice. Um, so on defense, <coughs> they have guys that are. I mean, Sam Montgomery is a stud, man. That guy is He's massive. He's, He's I mean, huge. Dude, he, I, correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't he an All American at LSU? LSU? Yeah, <laughs> he was on their. He was uh, he was on their last national like the team who yeah, went to the national I mean, title. He really good. He was in the backfield the entire day. Yeah. Um, their linebackers were all over the place. Scooby. Their their defensive backs were um, were you know playing with confidence. The communication. I asked Scooby Wright about that yeah. when I interviewed him. I was like, man, I was kind of surprised because they had just gotten into helmets like a day or two before that. I was like, I was shocked at like the level of communication, and you guys were flying around. Um, so the defense, I mean, I, they better be good on defense. If you're going to be the name defenders, you got to be good. Yeah. <laughs> and I, well, to be good in f- just in general, you have to be good on defense. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I, I mean, it's they were impressive. Um, the offense, um, I will say, Cardell Jones looked good. He had some good throws. He did have a couple of turnovers. Um, I think they were more miscommunication type of things. It was very sloppy on the offensive line. Um, a lot of penalties, like false starts and whatnot, when they were in the team drills. Yeah. But, like, that's to be expected. Offense is always it's behind. Yeah. I, talked to, I talked to Coach Pep Hamilton afterwards, just, you know, off camera. And he was saying, you know, well, you know, at this stage in minicamp, the defense is always going to win because it's more of a Simpler, see and react yeah. type of thing. On offense, it's more of execution. like you know, execution, yeah, yeah. Yeah. things like that. Makes so sense. I think it's it's more expected. And it's hard to gauge the offensive line when, you know, mm-hmm. you really don't have many opportunities to see like actual yeah. contact. Like, you know, Donnell Pumphrey will run for 20 yards, but he would have been tackled two yards in the backfield. Yeah, right? it's all touch. <laughs> it's all touch on the hip <laughs> right. kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. So, but I will say their running backs are silly. Fast, um, Jarrell Presley. Jarrell Presley yeah. is going to be a beast. And I think Donnell Pumphrey, he was a lot smaller in person, I thought, but he was fast. Yeah. He was shifty. He was quick. I think that combination is going to be the best in the XFL. Nice. Those guys were – and they, they're going to catch the ball a lot out of the backfield. Yeah. They focused on that. Interesting. Offense um, uh, out at wide receiver – they're they're pretty small in terms of their size. They drafted for speed More clearly. Quick, yeah. Yeah. Um, DeAndre which, Tompkins, which, which kind of in our uh, previous segments we've talked about. It, yeah. Right. I mean, we look at kind of what Pep wants to do on offense. I mean, that that, that it's fits to the a bill. T. It what fits, Pep wants to yeah, do. It fits the bill. You have quarterbacks with big arms, and Cardell and Tyree Jackson. Um, so you're gonna you know Line it's gonna be eight. a balanced. I think you know them in New York. It's gonna be more of a. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be more of a balanced attack. Like they're committed to the run. Yeah. Um, so you're gonna see a you know a commitment to the run and a lot of play action, mm-hmm. huge chunk yep. plays downfield with the speed that they got. Sorry about that, Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> so be careful. Don't I'm set, you set you on fire. fire. <laughs> <laughs> but they have speed. Uh, Eli Rogers was was a stud out there. Yeah. He's right. not the fastest guy in terms of like straight on speed. But his route running, I his bet route is. running was. It was crisp, yeah, man, and I he's bet. very like elusive. Nice. Then you have like DeAndre Tompkins; he was fast. He runs like a four three nine. So yeah. like they're going to be yeah, fast. They're going to look to like Good. get it downfield. So I think overall, I was very impressed with the defenders. You know, it's mini camp, so it's going to be a little sloppy. There's not much hitting, but um, yeah, very encouraged if I'm a DC Defenders fan. Yeah. All right, so what is it? Glass. I'll go. Glass? Yeah, I haven't gone in a little bit. Uh, what should the XFL app have on it? In regards to features, who said that? And that's from uh, Jared Hansen on Facebook. So thanks, Jared. Uh, a uh, Im- uh, XFL chalk talk embedded into the app. <laughs> that's what they should have. <laughs> Bingo. Let's move on. That's right. Betting, that's right. betting, betting. Yes. I think the XFL app should have nothing but like lines, the weather, because the weather affects the lines. Um, it, maybe yeah, in game, integrate fantasy? in game uh, betting. Oh, I think you have to integrate fantasy. fantasy, in fantasy? In that. Oh yeah. You can incorporate all I that. I actually, I actually think I, I wonder if. DraftKings is not kind of like a like inside of the app, so it says something like the XFL, you know, presented by DraftKings, right? And then yes. that that is where like you you don't go to the DraftKings app, you go to the you XFL. You probably do app. both, honestly. Well, you could probably do both, yeah. right? But you can do everything inside of that app. Yeah, yeah. It needs to have it needs to have original programming. Um, okay. It needs to have like behind the scenes at practice. I like yeah. that. Um, like, what like, do you, like what do you I care like about when you go to like, like I never go multimedia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I never go to the NFL app. Like I don't go to league apps. Point. I don't, I don't know. If you, do you guys? ESPN is one of the main apps that I go to. Um, NBA is about the only app. I like go for to. me, I'd care the most about going to see XFL chalk talk videos <laughs> hey, and stats, like in game stats, like updates on that kind of yeah. stuff, and probably fantasy football. But that's what I mean that the apps during football season, like I visit my fantasy apps. Yeah. Right. So, but if the fantasy app was in, embedded inside of the XFL app, you have to go. Like, to I would. I would. That's right. where maybe. I would go. Maybe. I mean, the fan kind of does this. The 
Football Action Network, yeah, which yeah. if you're not on that, you should subscribe. Yeah, it's not that's bad. really cool. Yeah. Um, but maybe bringing in all social media accounts so it's like one place. They do that on XFL.com mm -hmm. in kind of their rundown, their daily rundown. They kind of show you like the highlights from every, yeah. everyone's social media. So maybe something like that on the app. But for me, I'd care more about one XFL Chalk Talk, two right. stats, three fantasy football. That's yeah. like yeah. my top three. I agree with that, yeah. I mean, I, I think having like something, if they could m mimic something like ESPN Plus, I think that'd be a good move. Mm -hmm. Not saying you obviously have premium yeah. content that you pay for. I don't think that's the road they should go down quite yet. But have something like that. I think that'd be a really cool thing. Yeah, I think the the exclusive multimedia stuff's cool because yeah. I, I do ESPN Plus. Yeah, same um, here. And it's awesome. It, I, I think it's great. It, well, it's it, more in depth analysis and like background on things that you want to know about. It is. It, it's yeah, not yeah. like the thirty five thousand foot view right. items of sports, right? right. right? Like yeah. you know, big stories. It's it's just like it's really in depth documentaries that I really like. I get access to stuff that I normally wouldn't get access right. to. So you're having a lot of problems trying to light your cigar at this point. Man. It's because it's, it's cold. I feel it's like freezing, it's freezing. It's just me. Like has it gotten cold? My fingers are numb at this. I was going to ask you guys. Is it me or has it gotten colder? The temperature. Well, that's why you don't see anyone outside. They're all inside. Looking outside, like, who are those idiots out in 35-degree weather? Oh, uh, that's too funny. Um, yeah, so let's get an update. How are the beers tasting? It looks like, Gless, you've pretty much, everybody's pretty much out. Everybody's crot. Um, six was good. Brandon, can you read what six is? Yeah, six is the ancient Amarillo. Its bitterness is one, one out of five. Sweetness is one out of five. Amarillo hops paired with the yeast notes of like lemon and orange peel. It, it's like can a Can you lager. taste the orange in it? Not really. No? no, it's like a lager. Okay. Like, I would think of a lager or pilsner. That's really what six is. Yeah, honestly, the beer, honest, like, so I have one, two, three, seven, eight, and then a mix of eight and two, uh, according to what the the menu is, and they've all been good. Hence why I kind of keep going back and forth. There's not one that I don't like. Yeah. But uh, the Which IPAs, the IPAs here, I'm a fan. On point. Yeah, yeah man. It, I'm not a big not, IPA. No, nah, I'm not I, either. So I love IPAs, but like the IP, you know, I'm living in Richmond, where like you get all there's these like a, double, lot. triple yeah. hopped. I be, like you get yeah. it's unbelievably flowery, right? These are not. They're super smooth, which is good. I I prefer this the really smooth IPAs, not the super flowery, hoppy yeah. like. It, but you know, I like good bitterness, but not well, overly this is the citrus. Double dry hopped double IPA, and it's actually pretty good. Again, yeah. a huge but that, thank you. But that's you. what I mean. Yes. Is it's it's not even that. Woodridge Farm Brewery. Yeah, huge thank you to Woodridge Farm. This is like our favorite place in yeah. the world. I would say if you're um, ever in the, the Charlotte, scenery, it's if, awesome. if you're ever in the Charlottesville area, like come here. Yes. This is. It's not we only a beer. Like, we are surrounded by mountains right now. You probably it's can't. Really cool. Well, no, you can see it. Like, behind the brewery there, just mountains, 360, all yeah. the way around. Barry, the owner here, you see this badass building behind us? He built that from the ground <laughs> up. I'm going to put some video, you know, once we post this, yeah. post-production. There's a freaking tree in the middle of the bar. Like, this yeah, guy, cool. he chopped every piece of wood down in this brewery and built it out of, you know, out of, like, wood that he found on his farm. Really like cool. how cool is That's that? Really hey guys, man. <laughs> hey guys, I think I know what time it is. Let's open some gifts. You think so? I, I think, think so. so. I was just oh, thinking I the think. same thing, actually. All right, so me first. All right. <laughs> no, 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 no. We no, had no, an no. order of this. You yeah. Don't mess it up. Come on, don't man. mess it up. Yeah. I like gifts. Actually, you go last. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you do go last. All right. Um, let's do me first. So we basically From we me. did an ex a gift exchange, Same. and yes. um, so one person had one person. Pastel ruined it. It was gonna be a secret Santa, but I he told like told us. He told everybody who told everybody on the Google Doc. Who everybody had. I didn't quite understand <laughs> the definition of secret Santa. I just wanted a gift exchange. All right, so this is to me from Brandon. And by the way, like so <laughs> with the JMU, we got to the Mountain House. By the way, so this whole thing, like this, is kind of the kickoff to our um, XFL Chalk Talk retreat. Um, so for the next couple of days, we're gonna be up in the mountains, mapping out the show moving forward. Yeah. It's gonna be yes. very exciting. We're gonna be posting a lot of stuff. On social media. Can I explain real quick, though? All right. All right, here See, we go. But, but this, this is, is it. Suck. Th this is it. <laughs> he is so, what, needy? <laughs> it's your gift, yeah, bro. Yeah, you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not. I don't want to talk crap, I'll let man. you sink your own boat. But, uh, <laughs> that's right. I'm not. I don't know if spoil is the right word. I don't know if a little needy. All right. Just go get ahead. on with it, Open man. the gift, man. Go ahead. So that you just wanted to insult me before you gave <laughs> me a gift? <laughs> you're really spoiled, dude. Open it. Yeah, you're spoiled and needy. Here you go. I mean, what we got. All right, let's see. Looks to be. Right. Oh, a Walmart bag. Some sort of sweater. Ooh, looks like oh. an ugly sweater. 
No. I deserve to be spoiled. Ah, <laughs> nice. Dude, why didn't you give this to me before? I would have worn it on That's the show. Awesome. Get it on right now, man. I have my mic on. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> That's amazing. I don't know if you can see that. I deserve to Is be spoiled. Is that a hoodie? Is that a hood it's on got it? a hoodie, too. Nice. It's actually pretty nice. Yeah, that like, is what's up. With a nice red ball on top. Feels nice and warm, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get great use out of this. I knew I'd get the worst gift. <laughs> it's not the worst gift. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually a hint, but... <laughs> Oh, I man. appreciate it. What that. else we got? Who do we have next? All right, so let's do, uh, who should we do? I say Kenny. Me next? So where's right, mine at? Let's do Kenny. Oh, I had Kenny. All oh, right. All right. Let's see I here. This. There you go, buddy. I bet Excited. this is the worst gift. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got, Kenny? Ooh. We got a t-shirt. What does it say, Kenny? It says... Oh no! <laughs> what does it say? What it's it a Cardell Jones. No hey! Cardell, Evan hey! Jones, baby. Oh, oh. no! <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Oh my god, that is, <laughs> that's good. That is good. If anybody doesn't know, I ranked Cardell Jones ninth <laughs> out of eight starting quarterbacks because I had the rest this of the field a over him. Shame. That's so, a good one, man. That's, that's good. A, that's a oh, solid that is one. a good one, though. You have to, good you're one. gonna have to wear that. I will. I will definitely when Cardell wins. wins MVP, you're gonna yeah, have to wear yeah, that. Yeah, we'll see. Show. I hope you get Cardell Tyree one day with that shirt. Cardell F and Jones, I feel like we should make a bet. Like, there's got to be a bet where Kenny has to wear that for like five straight shows if like something happens. So we got to go back and listen to all of our previous segments. And then just be like, Kenny, you can only say the word um like three times. And if not, <laughs> oh, you have no. to wear the shirt for five straight shows. <laughs> that's not good because um is a crutch um. for me. That's not great. <laughs> All right, what we got? What we we got, got Gless next. Am I next? That's, your, that's you, All Gless. Right. All right. <laughs> Beautiful rap job. Yeah, it fell apart. Rap. All right, here we go. <laughs> hey! Hey! It's I, your, it's you your know what that is, Gless? <laughs> it's my hat. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I t- <laughs> You left that in my car last time we were in Wintergreen. <laughs> no way. You got him his own hat? <laughs> I, this is so ironic. Can I get can I tell Go ahead, something? go ahead, go ahead. I tore my house apart for an hour <laughs> trying to find this thing this, this week. Typical glass. Because I knew I was coming to the mountains. <laughs> oh, no. And I couldn't find it. That is too funny. I was funny. like, why would I lose my Nats hat? I love oh, this hat. Glass oh. is the only guy I know that has lost one ski boot. <laughs> and we couldn't find it for months. There we go. I'm putting it on. The, well, and... and, and uh, uh, to be honest, that was kind of a funny gift, which all apparently right, they're all funny gifts, which I didn't get the memo on, because I actually got you a real gift. Oh, thanks, man. So, all right, all right, here we well, go. luckily, you at least did the funny part. Oh, uh, anyways, oh, man. I hope this is a so photo of, like, all of us. <laughs> I know. Yeah. No, it's not a photo. I can Look, it's nicely wrapped, too. Like, I took yeah, time on this one. You took the time this on is, that one. Wait, this is so ironic. Oh, just open the gift. Go on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> all right, all right. Got a book. What do we got here? For Coach Glass, right? Yep. For the coach. Hey, let's go. Yeah. All right. The genius of desperation, schematic innovations that made the modern NFL. You put this next to my, my toilet, I'll probably read I it figured in about, you'd, about 12 hours. I figured you would, man. It's really cool. Kenny it's said he's read half of it already. I, read, I, I got it a couple days ago, and I read like half of it. It's <laughs> amazing. After today. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> That's solid, man. Yeah. Thanks, man. No worries. By the way, an actual good gift. gift. You see, like, all the wrapping's the same. I wrapped mine <laughs> last night at my in-laws, and I was like, I should probably bring nice. wrapping paper up to the house because I know these clowns yeah. are like, oh, I Walmart didn't wrap bag. my gift. Which is exactly that. <laughs> mine was exactly. in a giant bag. <laughs> and all three of them didn't have their <laughs> gift wrap. All okay, right. My turn. All right. Gless got a uh, pastel a gift. What do you think it is, pastel? It feels like a hat. Well, you are oh, a hat really? guy. That's your you stick. are a hat guy. Yeah, so, so here's the thing. Stick. Here's the thing. Before you open it, I want you to take your hat off, yeah. and then you got to put it on, and then you look <laughs> at it. Then you look at it. Okay. Okay. I want the camera to see it. Not. I'm not looking Don't look yet. at it yet. <laughs> I wish we could. Look, I w- look straight in the camera. I wish we could do like a zoom in, but we don't have anyone operating the camera. <laughs> now go ahead and take. It. <laughs> <laughs> a little taste of my own. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Louis, it says Luis Perez fan club. I see what it says. Hop on the bandwagon, baby. It's a super nice hat. It's, it's a new, new era, era hat, too. It's a new yeah. era. I was like, yeah, you know man. what? I should get him like a, like a nice one to get him it, like embroidered because he's going to wear Is it. Is this custom? Yeah. Like, or do they actually sell these? No, they, no, sell, no, them no, they sell them in the Richmond <laughs> <laughs> lids. Yeah. Let, let me tell you, to get that thing embroidered took me like three hours. It was the biggest pain in the ass. So if you don't know, Luis Perez, the uh, quarterback for the L.A. Wildcats, is probably my favorite quarterback yeah. out there. Now he is. As uh, you can tell. Part of the fan club. <laughs> the fan club out there, if you're looking for a president, <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm right there. Contact this guy. I'm right here. Because he's all in. That's oh, it. That's that's it. That was a good gift. Guys, man. these yeah. were awesome These were awesome good gifts. gifts. Man. No, these are good gifts. This was good stuff, this man. Yeah. Good yearly tradition. This so is cool. Yeah. We should do this next year, shouldn't we? Oh, for we sure. We should make Absolutely. this like a yearly thing. Woodridge sure. Farm has been so awesome letting yes. us come here. Um, Please helpful. come visit cool if you're in the setup. Charlotte's Bay Before, we, you before we wrap it. up, you before we wrap up, we have. You want to grab yeah. this? We're going to do our YouTube giveaway. And this is we're for the. Use Brandon's yeah, we're going to use your hat. <laughs> we're going to use your hat yep. for this. Or you, I mean, you know what? Use the Fred net. No, no, we're going to use the Louis Perez hat. All right. Um, so we had we had a couple. We had like a hundred or two of YouTube subscribers, and we're going to randomly pick a name out of here, and whoever we pull out is going to win a free replica jersey from their yep. favorite XFL team. Yep. We don't have all the names in here because if you have a private YouTube account, we can't access your name. So, sorry, you may want to change <laughs> that in the future. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll go ahead Give and it a pick. good mix. Give all it about five. I'll mix it around here. Yeah. There's a lot of names. Oh, and if you retweeted and shared, you got entered twice. Yep. So some That's names right. are in here some twice. Yep. Um, so right. thank you everybody for the support. Uh, so we have, as the winner, as the winner of the YouTube <laughs> replica jersey giveaway, XFL Chalk Talk. Merry Christmas, Frank Myers. Yeah! Hey! Congrats, Frank. Frank the Frank. Tank, baby. Frank, you got Frank it. Frank Myers. All right. Do, do awesome. I want to? Speaking of betting, do I want to take bets on what team he's going to select? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, because I don't. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I don't know off the top of my head. Exactly. Frank sounds like a St. Louis guy. Oh, okay. No, I right, think so that's a good guess. I'm gonna go Guardians. Frank, that sounds like a New York name. Can we do a uh, what would have been said? Frank Myers? No. <laughs> Frank Myers. No. I don't want to piss anyone the, off. The, the city of Fort Myers, which is near Tampa. So I'm gonna go Tampa. All right, there I'm you go. Say... There's no methodology behind it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going. I'm going straight. Straight contrarian. It sounds like he he has a name, but he's out there in Hollywood, L.A. Oh, all right. Frank all right. from Hollywood. Frank right. from right. Hollywood. Frank. Frank. I bet you're all way right. off on that one. <laughs> well, Frank and everyone else, thank you so much Congrats, for Frank. subscribing to yep. our YouTube channel. I can think it's I think it's safe to say that we're the fastest growing XFL show yeah. out there, right? We so. just started. We that. just started in September, and the fan engagement has been yeah. unbelievable, yes. and it's only going to continue for here. Like I said, we are here for our retreat. Yep. So we're going to be mapping out, you know, the road ahead as we yep. enter 2020. There's exciting stuff ahead. So guys, yep. um, I don't know if there's anything else before we wrap up. Merry Christmas. Th yeah, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Yep. Yep. Thank you so much Thank to you. Woodridge Farm Brewery yep. for your hospitality. If you're ever outside of Charlotte, it's right outside of Charlottesville. It's so funny because you got to put it in your GPS because it's it's a family owned brewery yeah so if you're driving down 29 it's literally like two flags that say brewery oh, yeah. and open <laughs> and open yeah like there's no and then you go up this gravel one lane path to get to this place oh, but it's so I, when i first so found this place a few years back there was an airplane parked out in the front of it yeah. how freaking cool is that yeah. <laughs> it's That's just cool. like every time cool you come place. here there's something different by. so thank you so much woodridge farm we've had a <laughs> blast man so far uh with this show yes. and it's only going to continue to grow um, so check us out on social media, at XFL Chalk Talk on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. and YouTube, yep. XFLChalkTalk.com. Happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And we will see you in 2020. Yeah! yeah. 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 Woo. It's a kickoff, man. It's a <laughs> Let's kickoff. go. Let's go. What's up, football fans? Visit XFLChalkTalk.com to get the latest analysis, discussions, interviews, and news from around the league. You can also sign up for our email list so you can receive notifications on when content is posted focused on your favorite XFL team.